about the 7125 with a bit of an effort, so that's good. A portable AM transmitter. Originally on 160, it's now on 40 metres. I get longer range and more contacts. And the antenna is a bit more efficient. It's all self-contained. Transmitter, receiver, battery and antenna coupler. So you just pick it up from its handle, go for a walk and set up on the air. It's really simple inside. A three transistor crystal control transmitter on one frequency only puts out about three or four watts. It's based on some pirate radio designs you might see on the web. Apparently, six or seven megs is a popular frequency range for pirates, and they're not shy to publish their transmitter designs. The receiver is also simple, three ICs, and any 602 converts the incoming seven megahertz to the IF of 455 kilohertz. A MK484, which you might know otherwise as the ZN414, is an AM transistor radio chip. In this application though, I'm using it as a 455 kilohertz IF amplifier. It's also an AM detector. The audio from that goes to a normal LM386 amplifier stage. It healthily drives the speaker and is plenty sensitive enough. Having a look inside, and the bottom board is the transmitter crystal oscillator, driver and power amplifier. The middle board up here is the modulator. That uses a power IC to generate several watts of modulating power. That goes into this transformer. It's actually just a DC power transformer with the 240 volt primary not used. It does, however, need to be center tapped. If you want a circuit, have a look at various circuits on the web for 7 MHz pirate transmitters. One called the Grenade seems to be very popular and has a good reputation. The board up here is the receiver. No front-end amplifier is required. Then at the bottom of the case is the battery pack, providing about 15 or 16 volts. That actually gets a bit more power output than if I was just using a standard 12 volt. Let's get on air and see how it goes in practice. Oh, it's a uh, radio transmitter. Right, oh, I thought it was, because you come down here quite often, don't you? Yeah, quite yeah. a bit, yeah. yeah. I just thought I'd hear that. Oh, that's a very big fishing rod. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a fishing rod, yeah. but not what I use. Yeah, so it's section good here, is it? Yeah. Because yeah. oh. there, there isn't much noise, it's yeah. much quieter than home. So who do you listen to? Um, I can talk all around Australia on it. Okay. Okay, now I know. <laughs> Thanks. The antenna coupler is an L-match, though a bit different from what I usually use. 100 picofarads is wired across the antenna. Between that and the Pi Network output filter is a switch. That switch is a toroid on the back of it. It's a T50-2 toroid with taps maybe every four or five or so turns. That varies the inductance and is sufficient to provide a reasonably good match to the high impedance N-fed half-wave antenna. No fancy SWR meters or antenna analyzers, just a simple RF field strength meter, comprising an RF choke, a germanium diode, and a ceramic capacitor on the back of a meter movement. You tune for maximum strength while adjusting the inductor. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I wouldn't recommend an AM rig as a first transmitter project. For that, I'd still prefer CW or double sideband. Both are more popular, both are better with low power, and you can generate reasonable output power with common off-the-shelf transistors. But an AM rig like this is a great novelty project once you've already had a bit of experience with other modes.